the night before the paperfall effects launch i got a message from a client that wanted to create an basically like a promo video animation uh, almost explainer like of for an app relaunch or an app update now the name of the app is weather app weather up it's an apple only app so if you are on apple make sure to check it out maybe you will enjoy using that weather app for yourself after working on this project for a couple of days i thought that it would be a good idea to make a video sharing a bunch of tips that will help you out if you ever want to make some type of motion graphics project for clients all using fusion so before you open your davinci resolve project there are a couple of things that you need to know which are basically the outputs that you will need basically what resolutions the video will need to be at uh, in this case we're gonna only do one but then we decided that we need a vertical version too and uh, luckily we didn't have to like it was just a matter of resizing a couple of things so it was nothing too complicated but you want to make sure to know that right before you start in the just in case there is like a huge difference on what you're gonna be showing in vertical and then also in the normal horizontal resolution also if you're gonna do something like an ui animation this is basically like ui animation right it's not like there's no characters or random shapes, uh, not abstract motion graphics and stuff like that. So if you're going to do that, you have to take into account that you might be provided with the assets or maybe they share a Figma project with you. So you want to make sure to have like access to uh, high quality PNGs and then also SVGs. Now, the reason why you're not going to be, you're probably not going to be able to use SVGs for everything unless you have like a super powerful computer because svgs bring a, a ton of notes as you can see here these are all just pngs actually this is not using uh svgs right so it does look a little bit crazy already imagine if you had svgs for all these different shades and stuff like that so make sure to get both if you're able to pngs high quality pngs and also svgs just in case there are some things that might need like extra detail animations and i'll be touching on that in a little bit as well now, once you open DaVinci Resolve, now the first thing that I will tell you to do is try to keep all your assets for each scene organized in a different folder or in a different bin inside DaVinci. That way, it's a lot easier for you to find things and then like come back to them and then just like make any changes. If you need to like add or replace something, then you already know where things are. That will save you a ton of time. That's number one and make sure everything is named obviously right like this one for example everything has like the different like icons has its name everything has to be named that way things are easier to understand now a quick interruption this video is brought to you by my recently launched paperfall effects if you want to add a paperfall collage effect to your videos make sure to go to paperfalleffects.com and check out the plugin that i built and maybe that is something that will help you out to create some pretty cool collage animations and add them to your projects let's continue with the video now before i open that infusion another tip that's going to be really useful for you to know is that if the whole project needs to look like it's just like one smooth like it's only like a one board and everything is happening in the same place but you're moving from one place to the other without actual scene cuts then you will probably need to have some sort of like guide of where you're gonna cut each scene and for that, I would recommend that you create some sort of like uh, a separate fusion composition for each scene. In this case, everything pretty much becomes comes back to this uh, first screen. So like, for example, here I go from this screen, I actually just roll back to this screen again. And that way I can start that next indicator screen or that next screen with that first image right so i don't have to create a fusion composition that contains all the scenes in one of them because first of all that's going to be a lot crazier it's going to make it take a lot more time to render and it's just going to make this whole thing a lot harder for you to like navigate all so if you're able to come back to that initial scene or like have a scene that ends in the same way that the next one start that is probably ideal now it's going to save you a ton of time because that way you can just start the next fusion composition right from that frame basically or that image right so that is basically what i did here each scene has or each major scene has its own composition that way i don't have to like carry on all the notes from the previous scene into this one and that helps to keep things a little bit more organized 
All right, let me open these fusion composition right here. Once you're in fusion, what I what if you were working with like PNGs, you will drag your PNGs and you will probably have to like loop these. So you have to go here and loop them. That way they're gonna last for the whole time. Now, if you open that individual image like these, it will look a little bit weird. So don't be scared of that. Once you connect these to your main tree, it will probably adjust itself to the proper resolution, as you can see right here. All right, let me delete that. Okay, now after you add something, by default, it's gonna be added as media in. So you wanna also rename each node of everything that you add into your composition. Here, as you can see, days has these days. So I already renamed these. So if there's something wrong with that, I can already go back and fix that exact point right there without having to like guess where it was before. Now this tip is actually part of something that I wanted to mention later on, but since it already showed up, I'm going to explain it right now. You see, I was actually not in a vertical uh, timeline, but I had worked on the, I had open fusion on the alternative uh, timeline right here, which was a vertical one. What happens in DaVinci sometimes is that it stays cached by default. So if you render this one, for example, like that, it might render it weird and be all over the place. So the easy fix for that is to go to playback and then go to timeline resolution or timeline proxy resolution, press full, and that will bring this back to normal, as you can see. Okay, now let's go back to the point that I wanted to make. The next point that I wanted to make is that you don't want to use the same node for all your different animations. In this case, or in this scene, we have these uh, pointer coming in and then we have the tapping animation. We could just do that whole thing on this same one because it's only the center or the position animation here coming in. But the reason why we're not doing that is because you want to try to keep things as organized as possible. If there is something that you need to change later on, only with the tapping, for example, then having a different transform node with only the tapping animation, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to come back and make any changes that you need to make into that one. And since we have these also named, then it's a lot easier to find. And then you can adjust the spline or the keyframe position or timing a lot more smoothly if these are separated. So if you can try to keep those things separated when you have like an important animation, have one node for one animation and then add another one for that and for the next animation. This was actually also important. If you already know that your project is going to be needing multiple resolutions, being that a normal horizontal resolution and also a vertical resolution, what you want to do here is when you start a fusion composition already, and this is probably I should have mentioned this right at the beginning, is that go to your first background node, go to image, and then deactivate auto resolution. What this does is that once you, because you probably would start with the horizontal version, once you go and basically copy this timeline to make the changes on the vertical ver version, you would not have to, everything will not try to readapt and it will just show up as these. And that makes it a lot easier to fix things or to move things around in the vertical resolution later on. So make sure to deactivate the auto resolution if you're going to be working on multiple resolutions. Otherwise, after you do this, you're going to have to go to your vertical timeline and then deactivate these for all of the background nodes. As you can see here, I have to like do that. But then sometimes what happens is that if you deactivate this one on this background node, the rest of them or the ones that are coming from the foreground might um, automatically adjust to that. Let me see if there's a background on here that I can use as an example. There's one right here. Let's see. Yeah, it got deactivated by default because this one is the one that's guiding all the other ones. But yeah, if you already have these from the beginning, it's going to make it a lot easier to prevent headaches in the future. So that is another thing that you should know. Now, a really useful thing that you can do is using groups. So in this case, for example, right here, you can see these animation or these lines animated right here in the background. That is basically the rain. And none of that is these. All of that is in this node or in this group right here. If I expand this, 
you can see that it looks a little bit crazy. And in this case, I actually brought these as an SVG. There it goes. And you already, if you're watching this, you're probably like, what is going on right there? Now, the way that this was formatted was that, let me actually just open these screen only. This is what it looks like if we only look at that. It looks pretty simple, but it took a while to figure out. The reason for this is that these are all in the same color. So the way that these came in as an SVG by default was that all these masks had a tower right here on this background node. Now, what I wanted to do was to have a transform node and then coming like that. And now this transform node, only this line, for example, will grow like that. And for that, you're using the pivot point and then bring these to that line. That way it starts from that point on. Now, the first thing that I tried for these was to have the transform node and I made a bunch of copies. In this case, there's I think 20 lines. So I had 20 transform nodes and then I had them basically like these. And then what I did was I basically just connected these uh, masks right here or all of these masks that had a tower. So they were all just connecting to this transform node as well. So the transform node was only affecting that exact line, basically. The problem with that is that for some reason, after you add so many transform nodes, it will crash and it will not work for some reason. Like it just didn't like that. So the workaround for these is that you need to actually separate big SVG files like these and try to make them their own. In this case, they all had the same color. So I created background instances for that. So each of these, and then I separated all the lines just to create their own little tower. And then each transform node had its own animation right here. If I press two on this one, we can see this, the next line right here. If I press two on this one, we can see this other line. If I press two is the one that's next to it. And we have that individual ones. Now, I'm not sure why this is the only way that it makes it work that way. Now, if your DaVinci Resolve is updated, you can probably use a multi-merge and that way connect a lot of things that have to do with the same thing. And that is what I basically did right here. I had a multi-merge and then all of, all of these lines came to this section. And then I had a multi-merge for the lines that were on the opposite side. So yeah, make sure to use the multi-merge also because it's a really useful tool to use when you have a lot of things that you want to connect and keep things organized. So yeah, those are, I think, the main tips that I wanted to share with you inside Fusion itself, right? Now, these are a, a few others that I think would help you out a lot. Okay, now that your project is done and maybe they say that they maybe they also needed sound effects for it or music, what you want to do is basically do a render of your project without the music and then just deactivate the actual Fusion composition and have that preview video or the video that you rendered up here. And you can also lock all these other timelines right here or the other layers. That way you don't make any changes that you were not really wanting to make. After that is on, then you can see your project without any lag and that way it's going to make it a lot easier for you to adjust or add sound effects to it, right? Now regarding sound effects, we have here a bunch of different layers and to keep things organized, what you would probably want to do is right click on each soundtrack and then add a different color to it. If you want, you can make sure to, to note yourself, like let's say these orange lines or the orange colors are only going to be switches or, or the, another type of sound effects. That way you already know where things are exactly. In this case, I just had them in different colors. I didn't really follow a specific organization method, right? But I didn't have that many different sound effects that I wanted to add to this, right? Now to find sound effects, use the resource that you already have, but adding sound effects, it's just another part of the process that takes a bunch of time. So yeah, making sure that your soundtracks and sound effects are organized and classified is a really great idea if you want to keep being efficient and to keep things tidy in your project. And now this is a super important and I'm leaving these for the last part because I want you to watch the whole video. But if you're just keeping through these tapes, uh, I want to make sure that you really watch this next one and it's backups. 
To create a backup, simply open your project uh, manager section right here, and then make sure to co either copy this project right here, just com control C and then control V to copy and paste it, and then also right click and then export the project. Now, when you export the project, every time you make like a major change or a major, let's say you finish one scene today, make sure to create a backup and then try to not replace that backup again. What happened to me is that for some reason, this one was not really opening anymore and it just started crashing all the time last night when I needed to do some changes and, and I was like, what is going on? Luckily, I had a backup. If I didn't have a backup, I'm not sure what I would have done. But yeah, now also, after you keep your backups, sometimes things do open. So the next tip or the last tip is basically patience. This morning, this project was not going to open. What I did was like, okay, I'm just going to click on it and let it do its thing. And maybe it will open after a while. I went and had lunch. And then when I came back, it was open. So sometimes you just have to let it slowly start up and then open the project by itself. So that is the last tip that I wanted to share with you.